Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to day number 21 of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to 3D model a two-part mold that you can 3D print. We'll take a look at how to use the combine tool to subtract a body, how to split a body in half, and how to create registration pins for the mold. To get started, I'm going to open up this donut file, which I'll create a mold of in this video. If you remember in day number 20, we created a one part mold. So in this demo, we'll take a look at how to create a multi part mold when the three dimensional object is too complex for a one part mold. Before I do anything with this model, I'll want to right click on the master component and select capture design history to ensure that our process is captured in the timeline below. Now, similar to the one part mold, the first thing we'll want to do is create a box that will encompass the entire object. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter R for rectangle. I'll select the XZ plane. And before I select the center origin, I'll select center rectangle in the sketch palette. I'll select the center origin. And I'm just going to make this 110 millimeters in each direction and hit enter. Now I'll hit the keyboard letter E for extrude and I'll select the rectangle. And again, we want this box to cover the entire donut. So I'll first select two sides for the direction. I'll drag the arrows for each direction around 20 millimeters or so until the box covers the donut shape. And you'll notice that it defaulted to the cut operation. So we'll want to make sure that we have new body set as the operation before we click OK. At this point, I'll want to start naming the bodies so it's easy to keep track of them. I'll toggle open the bodies folder and rename the first body donut and the second body mold box. To help us see what's going on here, we can go ahead and change the opacity of the mold box. To do this, simply right click on the body, go to opacity control, and change the opacity to 50%. Now we'll want to use the combine tool to subtract the donut shape from the box. I'll select combine from the modify dropdown list and then I'll select the mold box as the target body. As this is the object we'll want to cut away from. For the tool bodies or the shape that we'll use to cut, I'll select the donut. I'll double check that the operation is set to cut. And I'll also make sure that new component and keep tools is selected. And I'll click OK in the combine dialog box. Now, since we had new component selected, you'll see that our mold body that we just created was created within a different component. I'll go ahead and rename this component to donut mold by double clicking on it. And I'll turn off the original two bodies. At this point, we'll want to cut this mold into two parts. Before we split the body, I'll need to add a construction plane to reference as the split feature. I'll select mid plane from the construct drop down menu and then select the top and then the bottom of the box and click OK. And you'll see that the mid plane created a nice construction plane directly in the middle of the box. I'll select split body from the modify drop down list and then I'll select the mold box as the body to split. And I'll select the construction plane as the splitting tool and I'll click OK. Now to make this even easier to look at, I'll select the construction plane and hit the keyboard shortcut letter V to hide it. I can also turn the opacity back to 100% of both bodies to make them even easier to look at. And I'll rename the bodies top and bottom so they're even easier to decipher.
I'll hide the top and look at the bottom. And then I'll do the opposite by hiding the bottom so we can look at the top again. And you'll see that we have successfully cut out the donut shape from the mold box. At this point, we need to do a few more things. We need to create some registration pins so the mold always lines up correctly when it's placed together. And we also need to create a hole that allows the resin or chocolate or whatever liquid you pour into the mold to get into this inside cavity. Let's start off by creating the registration pins. I'll select the top body and hit the letter V on the keyboard to hide it. And I'll select the top plane of the view cube. Now you can go ahead and create registration pins with many different shapes, but personally, I like to use the sphere feature. So I'll select sphere from the create dropdown menu and then select the top surface. And I'll make this 10 millimeters wide and I'll make sure the operation is set to join. I'll select rectangular pattern from the create dropdown menu as we'll want to pattern this to the other three corners. Under the pattern type selector, I'll select features and then I'll select the sphere from the timeline. For the direction, I'll click on the edge of the mold and I'm just going to use the arrow here to adjust these spheres to approximately the same spot as the exact location is not that important. Now, once I have a new sphere previewed here in all three corners, I'll go ahead and click OK. Now we'll have to subtract these spheres from the top side of the mold so we can 3D print this mold and the registration marks will actually work. I'm going to turn the opacity of the top back down to 50%. Then I'll select the combine tool once again, and for the target body, I'll select the top, and for the tool bodies, I'll select the bottom. I'll make sure the operation is set to cut, select new component and keep tools, and click OK. Now you'll see that we no longer need the original top body, so we can hide that. And I'll double click to rename the original component to Donut Mold Bottom. And I'll also go ahead and rename the other component that we just created to Donut Mold Top. I'll turn the opacity back on for the top. And we'll hide the bottom by selecting it and hitting the keyboard shortcut letter V for View or Hide. And you'll notice that now we have both the top and bottom pieces of the mold each containing these nice registration spheres. So now we need to create a hole to pour the material into. And this part is really subjective to your specific needs. For this donut, it's likely only going to sit with the frosting side up. So I'm going to go ahead and put the hole in the bottom of the object, as it may leave a small ring on the final object. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter H for hole and select the bottom surface of the bottom box. Now I'm going to click and drag the hole point to be about in the middle of the donut ring. And we can adjust the hole settings to countersink. I'll type in 18 millimeters for the width of the countersink. I'll choose simple and angle. And for the height, I'll type in 6 millimeters, and for the width, I'll type in 10 millimeters. Now these hole settings again really depend on your object, where the hole cavity is, and what you're trying to achieve with your mold. You may have to 3D print out a test object and tweak it based on the results you get. Now if I turn the opacity back to 100% and take a look at the bottom part of the mold, you'll see that we have this nice pour spout to pour into the mold. The last thing that we need to do is check the draft analysis to see how well the object will come out of the mold. I'll select draft analysis from the inspect dropdown menu. I'll select the body and then the top surface as the direction and click OK. And you'll see that we may have issues with the edges coming out of the mold as it's red here. But this really depends on the material that you're working with.
We can reshow the top mold and right click and select repeat draft analysis and then do the same thing. I'll select the body and the top surface as the direction and click OK. And if we go ahead and take a look at this other side of the mold, you'll notice that we may end up with some undercut issues here in the frosting area of the donut. Now again, this is something that you have to play around with. You may find that a complex 3D printed mold will work well if you pour something flexible such as silicone, and it may not work as well if you have a hard material such as resin. With that said, you can always cut up your mold into more pieces, allowing you to remove any type of material out of the mold. To cut this up further, you'd simply have to follow the same steps where we have to create a construction plane and then use the split body tool. And I could also add extra registration keys to the sides of each mold part. Now one thing to keep in mind as well is that although more pieces may make it easier to pop an object out of the mold, you'll likely end up with more parting lines where the mold boxes meet. So you'll really have to plan ahead and think about the final results you're trying to achieve. Lastly, to 3D print this, you'll just have to right click on each component and select Save as STL. And of course, you could either save it to your desktop or you could send it directly to the 3D printer's slicing software. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.